What's the word, y'all? The NBA playoffs have become extremely unpredictable, and I'm here for it. Because let's be real, the first round of the NBA playoffs historically is pretty mid. Like, you know, you might get a series here and there that are really cool. Maybe you get a 3-6 matchup that's fine, or a 4-5 matchup that's typically good. Nah, this year, like every series except for the one that's already ended, has given us something. We got two teams that fought their way through the play-in to have a 3-1 lead on one of the top teams in their conference. The Miami Heat just got a historic performance from Jimmy Butler, and then the Lakers won a game against the Grizzlies, and, like, Le LeBron, listen, for the entirety of the fourth quarter, me and the guys, well, we watched the whole game in Discord, but we saw LeBron be so passive, passing it to Rui Hachimura, passing it to Austin Reeves, and this and this, and we just screaming, LeBron, take a shot! And then he made the biggest shot of the game. And then in overtime, made another one of the biggest shots in the game. So shout out to LeBron. It felt like he was coasting a lot of this game. And he still ended up with 20-20 and a win. But there's been a high level of unpredictability, which is dope. I mean, a lot of people picked the Lakers to beat the Memphis Grizzlies. I guess that wouldn't be necessarily unpredictable. But the one that has been extremely unpredictable is seeing the Miami Heat uh, take a 3-1 lead against the Milwaukee Bucks. I cannot talk about these without addressing the elephant in the room, and that, of course, has to do with injuries. In both of these series where you see the play-in, the, the, the lower seed go in and take a 3-1 lead, we've seen significant injuries across star players. Giannis was dealing with a booty thing, a back thing, whatever you want to call it, and he missed a few games. One of those games, they dominated, and another one of those games, they didn't. And, and this just showcases how small the margin of error you can really get in the NBA, or I guess sports in general. Because now you're down 2-1, right? Giannis gets injured in game one early in this one. They do not adjust. They lose a uh, home court advantage. And then in game two, they come in and put the smack down on the Miami Heat. They prepared to play without Giannis. But in game three, the, the Miami Heat fall back. And now you got Giannis in this awkward position that even if he's not 80%, 70%, he has to play because going down 3-1 is almost, I say almost, a death sentence. I think it's been 13 times in NBA history where we've seen some people come back 3-1. A lot of those times feel like they're more recently, like seeing the Denver Nuggets do it twice in 2020 or seeing the Cavs do it, of course, in the NBA Finals or seeing the Warriors do it the series before the NBA Finals. Um, and then in 2015, you started Houston Rockets. So, like, a lot of these feels like they just happened in the last... Man, 2015 is almost a decade ago. That's crazy. So that's why I say almost, because a lot of things can happen to change the series. But now Giannis has to play in this one. He had a good game, but the margin of error was so small that a historic performance like this puts you in a hole, and now you have no room for error. You lose a game, you are out. This is a team that a lot of people, me included, picked to win the NBA Finals. And they're one game away from being eliminated in the first round. Again, if we flip it over to the Western Conference, I can't say this was extremely unpredictable because a lot of people picked the Lakers to win this series. Especially when you consider that Steven Adams was down with an injury and he's not going to come back. And Brandon Clark is down with an injury. He's not going to come back. Those are two players you want in the hypothetical series against uh, Anthony Davis. And they, they're gone. And now we add the wrinkle of Ja Morant not being able to use his right hand as effectively as he wants. It makes sense that the Lakers are up here. Again, even before all of that, even before we knew who the Lakers were going to go against, a lot of people believed that the Lakers had done the things at the deadline to make themselves a championship contender. I think post-trade um, deadline, they were tied, I think, with the Memphis Grizzlies for the best record in the Western Conference. So again, they were trending upward. We made a video on this channel talking about how I did believe that this team could make a run, and here they are one game away from securing at least the first round, and they're going to go against the Sacramento Kings or the, the uh, Warriors in the next one. A, a lot of this, I can't say all of it because who knows, I'm not going to live in a world of hypotheticals, a lot of this has to do with the injuries around ball right now. Uh, I thought that the Clippers in the Sun series was gearing up to be a really, really good one, especially after game one when Kawhi Leonard was back in RoboCop mode. And then now he's out, missed the last couple, and he's guaranteed out for the next game as well. Joel Embiid got injured, had to miss a game, but luckily his team rallied and, and swept the Brooklyn Nets without him. And as far as I know, as far as I remember, they said, actually, why can't I'm just, I'm, on, I'm at a computer. Let me, let me just Google Joel Embiid. Probably 50% to start the next series, um, which is not ideal because the next series um, is going to be significantly harder than the one that they just got done with. So we got Giannis missing time. We got Embiid missing time. We got John Morant missing time. We got Kawhi Leonard missing time. Paul George, I, I'm going to include because, you know, him and Kawhi together is like the standard, but he ain't get injured in the playoffs. These are players that got injured in the playoffs, and that's not even counting like Tyler Hero, who's out with a hand injury, or Victor Oladipo, who's out for like a year. Man, I, I, I feel so bad for Victor Oladipo. The, I'm watching late in this game when it happened, and when, traditionally, if somebody's going to have an injury like this, you know, they're on the ground, they're screaming, they're... His reaction was of someone that's been there before, and that makes me sad. 
Um, and now we got to wait an entire season to see if he can come back. And he was already struggling to come back from the last one. So, VO, get well soon, man. And now we found out today that De'Aaron Fox is going to be trying, he might try to play with a broken index finger. So a lot of the variance that we're seeing in the playoffs right now is because of the injuries that, that are being suffered. But the one thing that's covering all of that up is the fact that these games have been damn good whether you know a star player is playing or not. We're getting banger after banger after banger. And again, this is the first round of the playoffs, y'all. We typically don't get this to the second round of the conference finals, even the finals. But we're getting it right here, right now. Bro, the Bucks are, are just one game away from... From getting eliminated, that is so wild to wrap my head around, man. And the way Jimmy Butler has been playing recently, you telling me he get three shots to win one game? Again, I don't want to count anything out. We just went through the stats. There are teams that have done it very, very recently. But, like, three chances to win one game in is, is a ton. Especially now that they're, oh, no, they get one They get one home game. They get one more home game. Um, so the, it's it's just insane. The, the, the performance that Jimmy Butler just put on was one of the greatest player performances of all time. And anytime we have a moment like this, I always try to come onto this channel and try to put in a perspective of how great of a performance it was. Like when Donovan Mitchell dropped his 71 or when Damian Lillard dropped his 71 or when Joel Embiid dropped his 56, 10, 7, 8, whatever it was game. Like in the moment you recognize that, oh my God, this is a crazy, crazy performance. Just, we're having so much fun, but you don't really you know, internalize how ridiculous of a performance this was. If you look at the all-time points in a single playoff game, we got Michael Jordan who had 63. We have Elgin Baylor at 61 back in 60 year, the 1962 season. Then we got Donovan Mitchell in the bubble. And then there's Jimmy Butler tying with a bunch of different people, including Charles Barkley, Michael Jordan again, and Will Chamberlain. Like we just experienced this game right there. And when you think about the stakes of them now taking a 3-1 lead against a number one seed, it makes it... E even crazier because 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 J Jordan 63 came in a loss. I don't know if y'all remember that. Shout out to the GOAT. But it came in a loss. It was young Jordan against Larry Bird and him. So it makes sense. Um, Donovan Mitchell one came in a loss because if you remember, it was him and Jamal Murray going head to head. So uh, Jimmy's on top of the win, kind of, kind of maybe more impressive. I, I can't say I can't say it again. I wasn't there in real time in, eight, in 1986 to say that. But again, when you, when you consider the stakes of them being the eighth seed going to get to one seed and the fact that they want to give themselves a 3 1 lead, you just look at the counter stats, you say it's incredible, and you add the stakes on top of it. It's like, man. This performance was ridiculous. And it was in regulation while Jordan's was in a double overtime game. And then uh, Donovan Mitchell was in a single overtime game. Well, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm just trying to put in perspective how ridiculous this performance was. Where the man was on fire. S simple as that. He was on fire. He was taking the shots they needed. Because he wasn't getting a lot of help from his number two. And traditionally on the offensive side, his number two is going to be Tyler Hero. But again, I mentioned Tyler Hero has a broken hand. He will not be coming back. So his number two is now Bam Adebayo. And there are so many moments in this game. Like, I am a self-proclaimed Bam believer, and I have been. You can check the archives for forever. This is rookie season, practically. This series so far is, 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 is really making me mad as a Bam believer. That's the name of the fan club, Bam Believers. I'm, I'm upset, Bam. Because Jimmy's out there giving his all, dropping 56, and Bam ain't had a game just yet. Is it going to happen? I, I do not know. I, genu I genuinely do not know. I, I would usually say, of course, it's going to happen eventually. I can't say yeah. I can't say for sure. But they got three chances to win one game, and then I don't know what happens after that. Again, I, I'm not trying to project or anything because anything can happen in the NBA but the way the Knicks have been taking care of the Cavaliers, now we got we got Knicks versus uh, Heat again. I don't know why I said again. I don't think they played against each other a couple years ago. So we got uh, Knicks versus Heat, and I'm not gonna say who I would pick to win that series because it's not. I'm not living in the world of hypotheticals. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna say who I would pick. We are gonna have to see it happen in real life before I start making predictions. Um, well, it, well, it looked like that second half of the bracket between the Cavs. I'm sorry, between the Celtics and the 76ers might determine the team that's going to win the East. Again, I don't want to count anybody out because, again, it has been extremely unpredictable. But with the Bucks being out, I mean, golly, I, I, I don't know what to say. Because if it felt like you didn't want to be the 4C going into the to the playoffs, and now with all of these things coming coming alive now, being the 4C, I mean, the 5C don't seem that bad. Because Jimmy just gave us a historical performance, and he's been great. But I still can't look at that team and say, ah, they're back to being a, a real-life championship contender. 
You know what I'm saying? At first, it was like, oh, if we the four seed or we the five seed, we first got to beat up on the other team, and that team is good. And then we got to go against the Bucks, and then we got to go against the winner of the Celtics in the, in the 76ers. That ain't something we want to do. So let's fight to get uh, two or three, and we'll fight each other two or three in the second round, and then whatever. I just hate the injuries at the end of the day. I just hate the injuries. Because obviously, a lot of things are different um, if the injuries don't exist. Maybe the product is slightly better. But again, the product ain't been bad. I don't know. I'm rambling at this point. Um, I missed a bunch of time uh, in the, between the last upload. Now I've been going through burnout stuff. But, but, if you needed some coverage about the NBA, you should have just clicked the, my link in my description so you can subscribe to the Enjoy Basketball newsletter. Absolutely. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you get an up-to-date on all things basketball. So if you're missing some series or you're wanting those storylines, you want to see viral tweets that maybe you missed out on, the Enjoy Basketball newsletter is the way to do that. So hit that link in the description. Uh, I'm going to try my hardest to do these every single day because there's a lot of series that we didn't even get to talk to, talk about, and I want to talk about them, but I, I want to do it the right way.